I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzyme Mental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to talk to you about glycation. So glycation is a very common diabetic complication that happens when glucose binds to the body's proteins and so the result of this is the formation of damaged structures, and these damaged structures are actually the hallmarks of accelerated aging. Glycation's effect on living tissue is similar to the process by which meat is browned when cooked at high temperatures, like when you cook it on the grill. Our body's living proteins also turn brown in the presence of excess glucose, and in this process, they're actually rendered useless. They don't really work anymore. Glycation occurs in all aging adults, not just diabetics. And also it affects tissues throughout the entire body. There are a number of legitimate ways to help block and even reverse toxic glycation reactions. How does glycation develop? Glucose in the body, as we all know, is a critical source of cellular energy. However, the accumulation of glucose-derived byproducts, or glycation byproducts as we call them, damages delicate cellular structures. The pathological impact is chronic inflammation, premature disease, and, as you can imagine, accelerated aging. These harmful byproducts are often known as advanced glycation end products, or ages, and yes, they do indeed accelerate aging in a number of ways. And this includes interfering with the normal function of our body's proteins, cross-linking proteins to cause tissue stiffening, skin wrinkling, and also impaired heart and blood vessel function, inducing chronic inflammatory reactions, and making cells more susceptible to oxidative damage. Everyone is at risk for the age-accelerating effects of glycation, and one reason for this, as we've talked about quite a bit here, is the overabundance of sugar in the standard American diet. However, diabetics' tissues undergo rapid aging and deterioration due to poor glucose control also. The life expectancy of an individual whose diabetes is not adequately controlled is significantly shortened. So in diabetics and non-diabetics, glycation has been implicated in disorders including kidney failure, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, skin cancer, arthritis, spinal disease, visual loss, atherosclerosis, and also heart disease. New human clinical trials demonstrate that higher accumulations of advanced glycation end products are associated with lower levels of physical activity and decreased reaction time. So how do you inhibit glycation? Preventing glycation damage can be accomplished in two general ways. First, you want to prevent the formation of the advanced glycation end products. And secondly, you want to minimize the impact of the ages that are already in the body. Many of the compounds that can help combat glycation can contribute to both the prevention of ages formation and a reduction in the harmful inflammation they trigger. So one of those compounds is benfotiamine. Benfotiamine is a fat-soluble derivative of thiamine, and we certainly talked about that, that has greater bioavailability that makes it capable of delivering increased clinical benefits. Benfotiamine blocks several tissue-damaging mechanisms, just one of them being advanced glycation end product formation. Benfotiamine is also able to limit effects of the ages by reducing inflammation and harmful age-triggering changes. Most human studies have evaluated the study of benfotiamine to prevent or reverse complications of diabetes caused by glycation. Clinical markers of diabetic nerve disease, kidney failure, blood vessel dysfunction, and oxidative stress have all been improved with benfotiamine. In one study, those supplementing with benfotiamine saw improvements in diabetic nerve disease symptoms, including pain and loss of sensation. Carnosine is another nutrient that is very helpful against glycation. Carnosine is a naturally occurring amino acid derivative that is found in high levels in muscle tissues and also the nervous system. Carnosine has been shown to deliver potent anti-glycation activity by preventing the cross-linking of proteins, which is associated with tissue stiffening in the skin, blood vessels, and also the heart. 
In animal models, carnosine supplementation provided a stabilizing effect on atherosclerotic plaques in blood vessels, thereby reducing the risk of stroke or heart attack. Cross-linking of proteins might also contribute to the structural changes in the brain that lead to Alzheimer's. Studies show that carnosine can prevent these cross-links also, potentially preventing cognitive decline in the elderly. Carnosine is notable in its ability to stop and remove damaged proteins. Glycation of skin tissues is unique in that its effects can be seen externally in the form of fine lines and wrinkles. And we all know what that looks like. So what foods accelerate glycation in the body? Certain methods of food preparation increase the age content in foods. Highly processed foods contain high levels of ages, as do protein and fat-rich foods cooked by dry heat methods, such as frying, grilling, and roasting. The browning of food, in addition to adding flavor, produces glycated compounds in the food. Although only about 10% of these ages consumed in the diet make it into the bloodstream, they are believed to contribute to the overall burden of ages and may significantly contribute to aging and chronic disease. And also, just changing your cooking methods along with your diet can really dramatically slow glycation damage also. Advanced glycation end products are found in foods that are overheated or cooked at very high temperatures. And so obviously this would include foods that have been fried, barbecued, grilled, or broiled. The worst culprits are overcooked animal products that speed up glycation, but any food that's exposed to extreme high heat can scorch the sugars and fats in food and accelerate formation of advanced glycation end products that way. Ages can also be found in many pre-packed foods that have been preserved, pasteurized, homogenized, or refined, and this would include things like white flour, cake mixes, dried milk, dried eggs, dairy products, including pasteurized milk, and also canned or frozen pre-cooked meals. Some other things you can do is you might want to consider steaming, boiling, poaching, stewing, stir frying, or even using a slow cooker. These methods not only cook foods with a lower amount of heat, they create more moisture during the cooking process. Both of those things are very protective against glycation because water or moisture in general can actually help to delay the reactions that lead to toxic glycation byproducts. And also something else you can do is to marinate your foods in olive oil, apple cider vinegar, garlic, mustard, lemon juice, and dry wines. These can all help in reducing glycation. So what you can do with this, guys, is really take a close look at what you eat every day and try to consciously remove the foods that are processed or at least heavily processed in any kind of way. And I'm not saying never eat these foods again because that would be impractical, but maybe just try to reduce your consumption to maybe just once or twice a month, if even that. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy. Thank you.